I'm going to save. You know what's awesome? Christmas presents. Oh, <laughs> oh are we starting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> do it. Uh, so, yeah, Christmas coming up. We're going to do just a series of Christmas episodes. Yeah. So we don't know what we're going to talk about yet. We're going to talk about Christmas movies and Christmas books and Christmas m- meals and um, toys and games and old commercials and whatever it feel, whatever we feel like so uh dude it, it so, is yeah. it is truly my favorite time of the year i, I love christmas time dude the fourth like pretty much september on through because i was with that's when we start unpacking the stuff to, to yeah uh, decorate for halloween and i know people get grumpy about you know christmas stuff showing up and Halloween time and it is kind of annoying whenever you need Halloween crap and yeah. it's like three weeks before Halloween and they've already put it away so <laughs> that's that kind of sucks but um but no all the way through through to New Year's and then you know like I I'm just I'm like a kid on Christmas yeah the Halloween the the the, the, the festivities the, the holidays and this year is going to be weird so we just need to liven it up. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I don't agree with, you know, the, the, the seasonal stuff being out too soon because I don't like it rushed. But as soon, soon as Thanksgiving is passed, I'm all about some Christmas, man. And, and I even save up all of my my work vacation time, and I save it for the week of Christmas and usually the week of New Year's. It's just my favorite time to, to spend at home. Um, it's it's cold outside, but, you know, you you hopefully you get to go and – see the family and spend that quality time together and, and Thanksgiving's no exception as well. I mean that that is just a great time as well. So I just don't know, man. I just I love that whole idea of, you know I find a peace in it, man. I find a peace mm-hmm. in Christmas time. Well man, like honestly I think a lot of times people just have this need to be grumpy about things. <laughs> just because like I'm the same way. And here's the thing. I used to work in retail. Like, I used to work in a mall. I used to work at, like, Radio Shack at Christmas time. And, (laughs) like, you talk about some brutal hours and some jackass customers and a reason to be all ball humbug about Christmas. But, like, I I don't care, man. I'm still still in. I still have a good time. Um, Yeah, I I could do without the Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You played, like, every – 20 seconds yep um but for those of you out there who are listening to this and you're like oh man i hate it and blah 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 blah. let me tell you a quick little story when i worked at radio shack because what you don't know what a lot of people don't know is that music is protected by ascap mm-hmm. and ascap ascap protects artists or and i'm using this in quotation marks it's mostly because they like to they like the money but if you want to be able to play copyrighted music in your establishment, whether it's your bar, your restaurant, your store, your garage sale, honestly, um, you're supposed to play. You're supposed to pay ASCAP for the rights, and that can be like four or five hundred dollars a month, depending on your uh, the, the nature of your business. So what a lot of businesses do is they will back then we'd have a tape or a videotape, mm-hmm. and we would have a one hour long videotape. That was like a about a 30-minute clip of some popular song, followed by a Radio Shack commercial of some sort, followed by another 30-second clip, because for 30 seconds you could get fair use. Yeah. And that would play on infinite repeat for 14 hours a day. <laughs> there are certain songs where I will hear 30 seconds of it and be surprised that there's more to the song. <laughs> like, even now. <laughs> So, so if you don't like the re- the Christmas carols on infinite repeat, just imagine it can be worse. <laughs> and for a lot of people working retail, it is. Mm. So, so don't don't get don't get grumpy about the Christmas carols. Just have a good time with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it can always be worse, man. That's for sure, <laughs> man. Uh, so are we going to talk about favorite gifts? Is that what we're going for here? I, yeah, I was gonna say the you know the just, let's go with like the toys that made us the stuff that you yeah. that you got that you loved or the stuff that you wanted and never got or 
you know, got, you know, stuff you want to get now that's just kind of, you're, you're hoping that, that Santa can fit down the chimney. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. As soon as I think about the big Christmas gifts, I can go all the way back to, I'm thinking five years old, where you had all the, the Mago action figures, right? Batman, Robin, mm-hmm. Superman, you know, the, the ones that came in those funky packages. I actually got, I was a Batman freak as a kid. Uh, even though my dad told me constantly that Superman was better than Batman any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a Batman fan. And one Christmas, I got pretty much Batman and Robin and every bad guy that Mego has made, plus the Bat Cave, oh, the, nice. Bat, the Batmobile, the Bat Cycle. I woke up and it was all set up under the tree. Holy smokes, dude. I, I mean, it was just, f- for a kid at that age, it was like, it, it couldn't get any better. Dude, that, that, sounds, that sounds pretty awesome. I have a similar one, but that was a couple years, mine was a couple years later. You're talking when you're about four or five years old, ish around that age. Yeah. Um, we would always go to my grandmother's house for Christmas, um, but we lived like I don't know four or five miles down the road, and so like <laughs> you weren't supposed to make that big of a mess because we're just gonna get up and leave. Right, like, <laughs> gonna get up. We're gonna have breakfast. You can play with your toys, and then we're gonna bounce. But I got this box, and it was you know, remember the little cowboys and Indians and the little army oh, guys, yeah. the little molded molded plastic. Heck yeah! I got this playset, and it was called Fort Courage. Yeah, and it was box. I mean, I was four, but this box was like freaking huge. huge. Yep, I had one. And it, and it, yeah, and it had <laughs> mountains and a fort in it, and it had yeah. this little like layout. And it had all of these weapons and cannons and fences and mm-hmm. just like the most detailed stuff in the world. And <laughs> I got up before my parents did and I found that box and I opened that box. <laughs> and I remember sitting there just like playing and putting putting guys on mountains and stuff. And my dad comes walking out of his bedroom and he, <laughs> the only words he said was, good grief. <laughs> and then like I turned around and I, I – saw the same landscape that he was seeing <laughs> and it was just like little guys like he couldn't make it to the kitchen to get his coffee without <laughs> stepping on <laughs> these little guys <laughs> and i just remember them him walking through and just being like oh man <laughs> like, yeah. somebody hates me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean those sets Which, i mean they, they had a lot of stuff in them man oh man it was a blast I mean, it's I funny. Had that thing until, it's funny because probably grown. probably that box wasn't that big when you look at it now, but back then because we're kids, it's like you know as big as a door, maybe even bigger. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> well, I know we mentioned it too on uh, on a previous episode, but like when he, when He Man hit, yeah, like for me that was like the, the atom bomb, and I yeah. like woke up and there's Castle Grayskull and there's all the, the He-Man guys, you know, the Star Wars guys. Like every year there's some like, it's as if these people had a plan. Yeah. You know? oh, <laughs> like yeah. every Christmas there was something. But yeah. Um, but I still remember that Fort Courage and my poor dad being like, <laughs> yeah, I had little cowboys and Indians all over my floor forever for yeah. years. They're just <laughs> like, <laughs> and uh, of course, Again, 70s kid, so um, getting the evil Knievel, you know, the the wind-up bike, which I just got one recently. You saw me post pictures for that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, take, taking you back to that age. But, you know, I had I had the, the jet cycle that, that came out a little later on where he had these two little canisters on the sides of his bike that were red, transparent plastic, and inside of it, uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but you used to, you could buy these little spinny wheels and you would press it and it would make sparks inside of it. Uh huh. Yeah. S- same technology in this. It's just like a flint in there. And when you sped the bike up, something would go in there and hit those and make sparks light up in that jet cycle. And boy, would uh-huh. I give to have that now, you know, because 
Oh it's, man, it's such a rare thing. But yeah, I I I'd always get those things. But then you'd go to the the neighbor that got the thing you didn't get, which was you know I always wanted the bus, the evil can evil bus. <laughs> that you could build the ramp on the back of. And so not only could you haul your bike and drive in the bus, but you could put the ramp down the back and jump over the top of the bus, you know, but, uh, I, I think too. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I think it was the, almost the scarcity thing because that was exactly the thing. It's like, yeah. I get He-Man guys and you know, it's like we call them, you know, in, in collector's world, you call them like the four back or the eight back. So when you look at the back of the package and there's yeah. that many characters and, um, so then you'd get all of those, and then you'd get a new guy, and you'd look at the back, and like there's all these guys he didn't have. Yeah. And then you'd get most of them, but then there's like you'd go over to your friend's house, and he'd have that one guy, and you're just like, yeah. There's the the, the jealousy would turn <laughs> on. Like, I want to play with him. He's my favorite guy. You know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I I had cousins or cousins. I had aunts and uncles that just galore. Like I had a huge extended family, and so I was quite fortunate i would i would venture to say i was spoiled rotten as my parents used to tell me a lot yeah um so like if it came to he-man i got them all <laughs> and it wasn't that i was just like 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 demanding like i will have them all what would right. happen is the the neighbor you know the neighbors the the family would put out the call yeah the network and my mom <laughs> my, my mom would be like well he's into he-man this year yeah and they'd be like okay um what does he want and and my mom being my mom would just be like well get him whatever it really doesn't matter because, and I remember her talking on the phone and being like, if he gets two of a guy, he'll trade it to somebody. So don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> if he get, you know, and, uh, so yeah, that's what, you know, like I'd have, you know, several of one guy and then I'd go to school and trade them out for other guys and stuff. So I was very fortunate, you know, I had all the play sets, but the one thing that I never got that I wanted, and I know exactly why I didn't get it. My dad would say, because it was too evil, but everything else was evil too was uh snake mountain oh yeah i didn't i didn't get snake mountain but i know i didn't get snake mountain because snake mountain had the microphone on it that made it <laughs> loud <laughs> and i know my dad was probably like no it's too evil <laughs> it's just it's just evil we're not gonna we're not gonna be messing with that but <laughs> oh man but yeah lo love me some he-man man i used to oh and that's exactly what batman was for me man because you know, during the day on TV, they were showing the old series, and it was on when I would get home, and it just became, or you know, if I was a babysitter or whatever, but it was my show. And, you know, then to have action figures, or to they were dolls, legit dolls back then. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it was. And to feel like that you had that complete thing was like, wow. And that trend kept for a while, because I believe the next year you went from Evil Knievel, then it went to the Six Million Dollar Man, which mm -hmm. I had all the cool Six Million Dollar Man stuff. And then Star Wars happened, and I really only had two figures. I got a Luke figure and a Darth figure. And I go to school, and there's some moron in my class that's got Greedo, Hammerhead, <laughs> and I'm like, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> I want those guys. <laughs> well, you know, I had the Star Wars guys. Thing was, I liked Star Wars and I liked playing with Star Wars, but the um, and even even He Man, um, He Man was more flexible. Yep. Because you know, because his legs would flex, but the 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 He Man design where they're kind of in a sitting position to begin with. Yeah. So that they fall backwards. Yeah, you know? um, and Star Wars was cool, except for like you couldn't have guys like the the, the speeder bike guys are sitting on the bike with like like they're yeah. stretching their uh, hamstrings, it's yeah. just like straight forward. It was like it was GI Joe that broke that open for me because those guys right. were fully posable. They yeah. fit in their in their in their in their game in their in their cockpits and then in their vehicles and stuff. Micronauts was the first ones I saw that had all the joints in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's 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 kind of what they took to GI Joe and kind of you know put in that. So it's a it's the smartest thing they did. And you got to remember Star Wars going back to you know toys that made us. They were just making it happen because it hadn't really been done before as for for mm -hmm. a movie or anything. So they were just winging it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean the Micronauts that was a big one for me for for a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, you know, of course, we were outside all the time. So for yeah. me, and like all I can't I can just imagine all the Karens out there now like like don't give little Billy the gun. <laughs> Man, I had some of the most realistic looking guns in the world. <laughs> I mean, like I had an arsenal. Wow. And every Christmas I would get more. But like one of my favorite guns that I ever got, and get this, this was this was straight up legal. I've been trying to find one. The the cheapest one I saw was like 150 bucks, so I don't want it that bad. Um, but it was this Uzi. So I was a little older. I would have been like nine or ten at this point. But there's this Uzi, and get this, it was made out of metal, right? Hmm. And it was it was battery operated, and the batteries were in a detachable magazine. Yeah. So like on a Uzi, it's got a magazine detach button on the real Uzi to release the magazine. Right. You crack it open. You put some batteries in there. You pop that mofo in there. You turn it on by racking the slide. <laughs> and then whenever you fired it, there was a servo motor inside that would make it, it recoil. Yeah. And then it had this little thing at the top where you put some three in one uh, household oil. So after it vibrates and recoils and it lit up at the barrel, <laughs> then it would smoke. The, the, the oil, the oil would smoke. It was, it was heavy. It felt real. It was the coolest gun, like that gun and a, and a transform Megatron saved the world from Russians for like two years. Like I love that thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used to have that Megatron, that Walther stuck in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and this Uzi <laughs> running around my front yard. Ah! Just... The neighbors are going, yep, watch that kid. <laughs> yeah, keep an eye out on that. Keep keep an eye out for him. Uh, oh, dude, and then I had a green machine. Remember those? Oh, man, <laughs> I wanted a green machine so bad. There's, I had, yeah. You... I didn't get a green machine. I didn't get a, a big wheel. But what I did get was, again, evil can evil. But it was the uh, it was like the chopper, but it was the pedal bike, right? So you sit in the long, hard plastic seat with the long handles, and your feet were underneath, and you did like back and forth like this, mm-hmm. and it would make the back wheels turn, and you, yeah. you steered it. So it was one of those. Um, I I had like a little pedal car like that. Those are fun. Well, they're fun if you got somewhere you can actually drive it. It doesn't do well in grass. <laughs> <laughs> so the yeah. whole time I had it. Your only option was to get out on the main road, because <laughs> it was either gravel or grass. That was your that was your pick, right? So it didn't turn out to be the the best toy, but and I sure was excited because it was like I get to jump in an evil Knievel vehicle yep. and not go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um... green machines, though, man, those things were awesome. So my parents and grandparents shopped at Sears a lot. Oh, yeah. And Sears, you can get everything. And you saw that video that I posted of that Sears catalog from 1982. Yeah. And I think because I was filming the video when I discovered the uh, the Sears guitar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's That was, you know. And so this was a guitar I got when I was seven years old and uh, <laughs> didn't learn how to play it. I didn't learn how to play a guitar until I got my Stratocaster later when I was a teenager. Yeah. But this thing was floating around my bedroom for the longest time. And I learned a couple of chords out of the Mel Bay book. And then it just kind of sat. It just wow. kind of just was was around the house. And, like, my sister took the strings off of it and used it as a piece of wall art and stuff. <laughs> and then yeah. I took it back. And I was like, I was like, no, man, that's mine. So, so I got it back. And I cleaned it up. And I restrung it. And lo and behold, after 40 years or so, you know, 30, 36 years, that wood hardened and it sounds awesome. Like, it's got a really good sound now. And I'm like, oh, I'm kind of glad I didn't get rid of that thing. This is a little three quarter size guitar that, uh, yeah. I mean, it was $4 at Sears 30 years ago. So it's not like it's a, uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> It's amazing that it's still in that good a shape. I mean, we think being, you know, laying around for that long of a time and around kids, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, 
That was one thing about Sears. They made stuff that was kind of sucked, but it was bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It didn't work very well, but you couldn't break it either. So, like, I remember always looking through those and looking at the drum sets they had as a kid, you know, and, and the guitars. It had the guitars that had the speaker built into the, the electric guitar, mm-hmm. you know, all those things. <laughs> well, I remember being mystified by electric guitars. Oh, yeah. You know, because acoustic guitars made sense. It's got mm-hmm. a hole in it, and so you strum, and there's sound comes out of that. But just the whole idea of yeah, you know where the sound comes out of like, and then I'd see those Sears catalogs and it would be like, oh, here's a speaker built in, and I'm like, well, isn't that kind of what an acoustic guitar is? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I was like, I've been, I've been, I've been a fan of the guitar as an instrument forever. Yeah. So that Me was my too. first one. I got it when like seven years old. So yeah. <laughs> still got it. Still sitting here. That's awesome. Did, didn't keep a lot of stuff from, from that age, but a couple things pop up every now and then, and I'm like, oh, hey, cool. Man, if there was one thing I wish I had, it was a it was a toy guitar. Actually, there's two of them. I had two toy guitars that I would give anything to have again. One of them was a Roy Rogers toy acoustic guitar. Me and my cousin both got I've got pictures of them somewhere. I'll try to find them. So there was that, which it looked humongous on this, because I think it was for like, maybe teenage kids and we were like mm-hmm. four or five in these big humongous <laughs> guitars. Um, but they were really cool, man. I mean, just, Oh, you know, cowboy Western looking guitars, you know? And then I'm a kiss fan. So they came out with a kiss toy guitar. Oh, and, oh yeah. Yeah. It had the, the, you know, the, the plastic strings on it, you know, re- re- real cheap. You couldn't really play it. But, boy, I'd love to just have one sitting around because I thought that was the greatest thing ever when I got it. <laughs> so, speaking of Kiss, 1978, Christmas morning. This is the year that Kiss made the four solo albums. So, mm-hmm. they were on the brink of splitting up. So, to keep the band together, they decided to all do solo albums to give everybody a break. But get to be get to stretch a little bit and do something different. And for Christmas, I got the Gene Simmons solo album. This is 1978, so my church upbringing is telling me that Kiss is the devil. <laughs> you don't listen to Kiss. And I don't know if you're familiar with that album or not, but when you put the album on, or CD or whatever you listen to, on that solo album, when it starts off, it starts off with this evil, like, reverse laugh, like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> So here I am, an eight-year-old kid, dropping the needle on this record of a band that I've been told is the devil, and I'm hearing, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> It scared the crap out of me, man. <laughs> and the, it's the first song, Radioactive. It's got this weird beginning where it's all it sounds like samurai's, samurai's fighting in the background and all this weird... It's the weirdest opening to an album ever. Scared the crap out of me. Because for <laughs> once I thought, holy crap, my parents are right. They're the devil. <laughs> right. oh. <That's>... So <laughs> when we lived in Portland, my cousins lived like a few blocks away. And so my parents had bought this house. And inside the garage, the previous owners had built a dark room. And uh, so my parents just used it as kind of a storage room. But as it being a dark room, it was entire, like, it had a light bulb inside, but it was a red light. So you'd go in and you flip the switch, and it was just, it was dark. <laughs> and so so my parents would hide stuff in there. Well, I was playing with my Uzi and my, and my pistol, and I was always playing G.I. Joe's. And, like, we played sports in my front yard. Like, our house, we, we had kids over all the time. Like, my house was a, just a hub for kids. Because, first of all, where it was, there was a big easement right next to it that everybody used to cut through the neighborhoods to get to and from school. So, and we lived, it was a pretty small town. So, from one side of town to the other, you'd cut right next to my house. So, people would stop by on the way to school, on the way home. You know, we'd play, ride bikes, whatever. Well, we're running around playing G.I. Joe. And I'm I'm sneaking around, and I crawl into that dark room, and I, you know, <laughs> getting back here to uh to to kill somebody, and I smell like electricity, I smell uh-huh. electronics, 
And I go back there and I look, and there's a stereo system hidden under a, under a blanket in this in this room. So I got the drop on you now because I know what I'm getting for Christmas, right? <laughs> so I man, I was so excited. I'm I mean I did I zip yeah. my lip. I didn't say anything. I was uh, but come Christmas morning, come to find out. My my uh my aunt was stashing it for my cousin uh, at our house. Oh. So Christmas Christmas comes and there's no stereo. And oh. oh man, I was I was I was so bummed. Melted. And so <laughs> so like I got some other presents and you know, it was cool. But uh I was I was obviously visibly upset. And so my dad kinda of pulled me to the side and was like, you know, what's the problem? And I told him, you know, I kind of confessed. I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to go in the dark room, but I was in there and I saw the thing. And, you know, I didn't get, to, I thought I was getting a stereo and I didn't get a stereo. And he's like, okay, like, you want a stereo? I was like, I want a stereo. He had a whole bunch of, like, he was an audiophile. So he, mm. he had a whole bunch of, like, he had a stereo receiver and an amplifier yeah. that he wasn't using. He had an old tape deck and a reel to reel. All the components. He had, yeah. He had a component system, and it was all – it's that, that lo-fi, hi-fi from the oh. late 70s. Oh, yeah. It's like, like, you know, blast you right out of your neighbor's house. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we go, and we set that down in my room. And like, he, he moved – we had a, a an old side table set that he was trying to get rid of, and he took one of the side tables and took it in my room and set up there, set these components on there, set the speakers to the side. And dropped the Jimi Hendrix experience on, <laughs> on, and he's like, you want a stereo? He's like, that, that's off the shelf Kmart crap. Now you have a stereo. And, <laughs> oh, dude, it was like best present ever. It was like, it was like kind of close to New Year's by the, when this happened. But, oh man, I still remember that. Like, I wish I still had all those components. Because one by one, they just kind of fell apart and stopped working. Because I've, I've been music is yeah. i've been listening to music for as long as i can remember so you know like the tape deck eventually just the belts wore out yeah like the belt the belt drive on the record player busted and the speakers <laughs> blew out or, or dry rotted or whatever but oh yeah man like dude those, that... those speaker cabinets from back then too man they weighed as much as a piano <laughs> i mean mm -hmm. they were solid <laughs> but yeah Getting that's, a stereo. That's awesome. And then, of course, all my friends had, like, boom boxes and stuff, and they thought they were cool. Right. And I kind of thought I was I thought I was a little dorky that I had, like, kind of outdated stuff. But you could not beat the sound. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, like you you get a Walkman, and, you know, you put your tape in there, and you put headphones on, and you got, like, really nice, crisp highs and really good sound. And you take that off and go put the same tape in my stereo, and it just sounded like you were seeing them live. Right. They just punch you in the chest, dude. Yeah. <laughs> my stepfather had bought, bought the stereo system from somebody, and it was all old components like that, and it had two reel-to-reels with it. So that's really an experience in itself, too, when you when you start comparing listening to reel-to-reel -to -reel tape versus 8-track or anything else. You're like, holy crap, what a difference, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I was always really into all that stuff, man, and... I don't know if it's just because growing up and having aunts and uncles that were into music and, you know, they had the big tricked out eight track players in their cars and all that stuff. And you just kind of gravitate towards that stuff. And yeah, I loved it. But I will say, man, I got that first boom box, which I got for Christmas. It was a Sony. Big old joker, man. Yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. See, I had a small Sony... It wasn't a big boombox. It was just Sony, you know, just portable radio. Yeah. That, again, I wore the buttons off of that thing with tape decks and everything because I would carry that around out on the driveway when I was riding my bike or playing, you know, playing in the outside. I mean, that that had... This thing, man. And, and that's it. Like, that thing lasted me until I was, like, mid-high school. And, like, one of the tape decks stopped, one of the... One of the it was an yeah. auto reverse dual cassette, and one of the oh, yeah. players stopped working, and I I was like, okay, I'll fix it. And I opened it up, and I saw something had actually broken, like there's a piece of broken plastic. So I got screws, and I literally just surgically removed that one 
side of the tape deck and then put the cover back on and the other one played, I was happy. <laughs> uh, it was just like this Franken, Frankenstein system. It was great. <laughs> that that jam box, man, I think it took eight D batteries. <laughs> it would play for like 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Thing weighed a ton, man. But yeah, you, you think about just what that would cost in batteries just to carry that thing around. So, oh, yeah, bat- batteries sucked. were my nemesis when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Batteries. <laughs> Everything took batteries. And... A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. Before Christmas, they claimed they were bored. But then I found Radio Shack's incredible selection of electronic games. He's rescuing the fair maiden with the Kingman game. She's exploring dangerous new worlds with Zackman. And with the alien chase game, he can do space battle with an opponent or by himself. <clears throat> there are more gifts if anyone's bored. I won! Fascinating electronic games from $7.95 to $59.95 only at Radio Shack. <laughs> That's like when I said when I worked at the mall, you, some jerk parents would come in there and spend like 100 bucks on a, on a race car and then not buy the batteries. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> well, come on, man. You got to buy the batteries. They're like, oh, that costs too much. Like, well, then. Well, how are they going to use it? They can't drive the car. I'm like, oh, well, tell his grandmother. I'm like, oh, that sucks because he's going to open it on Christmas and can't play with it. You have to wait till your grand, the granny gives you your presents. To, to... <laughs> oh, speaking of that, I wanted to bring this up. So, my grandparents, not a lot of money. So, and there was two of us, me and my cousin. And they had, it's, I think you've seen the picture. They pretty much had to buy duplicates of everything for both of us. Because one of us would get jealous of the other one if we didn't. And we just, we were raised this way. But they would shop at probably Ben Franklin's or the dollar store for our gifts and they would buy the strangest arrangement of stuff. But somehow (laughs) Gary and I would take these, my cousin, we would take these and we would end up coming up with some of the coolest games (laughs) ever (laughs) by these things they would buy. So I remember one in particular one year and, and I know it came from a dollar store and it was a, a game that you bought. It had a stand up cutout. It was a plastic figure of Alien from the Alien movie and it had these points you know it had snap on hand snap on head but they were they were flat but they would snap on there was a bell right here in his chest and you got this like a the old cheap pop gun that had the 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 ping pong balls in it right and you would (laughs) shoot shoot this at at the alien and try to knock its hand off and its head off but at the same time they bought us these other guns and this is right when you've gone from the old stopper guns that had the hard plastic piece, and then you just had the rubber piece on the end, to where mm-hmm. this was the new ones that looked like a it looked like a space gun, and your the, the stoppers were this long, and they were the orange kind of transparent. The whole thing yeah. was soft, and you these things were so strong. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you could shoot them across the room; they'd stick to whatever. So, the ping pong ball thing. That's out of here. Let's take these guns, start shooting these aliens. Man, you're popping the head, and the head's flying off. And Yeah, man. It's, it's just amazing that we just thought our grandparents just bought us the coolest thing ever, and they don't even know it, you know, because we, we kind of transformed it into something much cooler by combining them. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Same thing with, like, combining you like, <laughs> you get the... the the weird off-brand uh, He-Man figures or G.I. Joes or whatever. Yeah, sure. And it's like, it's like you get them and the, your, fir- your first thing is like, wait, what is this? And then <laughs> co- come to find out, it's like, oh, wait, this guy's got like the ninja clothing comes off. And yeah. so then now you can dress up He-Man with the ninja outfit. And it's just like, <laughs> and so then you're you're the only kid on your street with like a ninja He-Man, you know? <laughs> Right. And they're like, where did yeah. you get this? You're like, I don't know. My grandma got it somewhere, and it's cool, you know. <laughs> like, but you're right. You like, you get those off those off the beat GI Joe men that just had the coolest gun or something, or the backpack yeah. or the wings or something. And like, oh man, I used to have like same thing. My grandmother, some somebody in my family, I don't know who gave it, but I had this like little two headed dragon, this little rubber two headed dragon. Yep. God, I looked for that thing on eBay not too long ago, and. Oof. That was rough. <laughs> it was just like purple two-headed dragon that was about this tall, and man, he he ate a lot of bad guys. Ate a lot of good guys. 
you know, he's just this unkillable dragon. Because I'd have him, like, he'd be, and, like, and be, like, ding, 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 because his armor was just too strong. Like, they yeah. couldn't kill him. Yeah. And he showed up. It was bad news. But, yeah, he probably got him at, the, like, the out of the dollar bin or, sure. you know, the five and dime or whatever. Oh, yeah. That kind of stuff is a blast. Well, and, you know, that's the way we always looked at it, too, is, I mean, it, we didn't know any different. I mean, we weren't one of those that was going to get upset because it wasn't something exactly we asked for. We we liked the idea of it being a surprise. And like you said, it's it's a matter of what you do with it. You know, uh, that that made for well, some of our favorite toys. Well, and like you said, you know, it's like, like I said, my mom would be like, oh, don't worry about it. So like one, one Christmas, that was, that was kind of a transitional Christmas because I was real into GI Joe, but I was really starting to look around at girls. So it was kind of like, <laughs> I wanted, like, I wanted a Walkman and, and some tapes, but I also wanted some GI Joe stuff. That was like kind of that. And that year the GI Joe loot just stacked. Like I got so much stuff, but I also got like a whole bunch of the same characters. Yeah. And so GI Joe, the Cobra, the bad guys, they had these troopers and they were dressed in a red uniform Mm -hmm. and they were, they were, they were called elite troopers, but they were just standard army guys. So kind of like stormtroopers. the more you have, the better, because otherwise you're just, you're just killing the same guy over and over again and having that one guy stand in for the hundreds that you're supposed to have in your, in your battalion. Right. Yeah. And so I got like 20 or, well, not 20, I probably got like 10 of this same guy. (laughs) Still. And and my mom (laughs) was like, she was all, because like I didn't, I got a lot of vehicles, but that was like the only guy I got. And I got like 10 of him. So like no variety. And my mom was like, like, oh, she's all apologizing. She's like, oh, you know, we'll just keep them, keep them and we'll take you on Monday and we'll go. Man, I ripped those things open as fast as I could. (laughs) Like rip, 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 rip. No, like, no, this is the coolest thing ever <laughs> like I, I got lots of guys but now i've got like 10 of these guys you know so yeah it's like sometimes sometimes your parents are kind of like oh i'm sorry it's not working out and you're just like wait what no this is the coolest thing in the world <laughs> to go I along never... with to go along with the the like you're saying about you know the, your parents playing the 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 game where they tell everybody kind of what kind of stuff to get you because you're reaching that age where they don't really know <laughs> I'm 15, I guess. We go to my grandparents, and I guess somebody told him, hey, you know, he's into cassettes, he's into music, you know, buy him, buy him a, a cassette or something. <laughs> my grandmother, uh, uh, all right, me, 15 years old, I'm into Dawkins, Priest, <laughs> S- Striper, Kiss. I get... The Jacksons reunion album, right? Michael Jackson and his brothers, which I thought, okay, fine. You know, it had the big song they did with Mick Jagger on there, State of Shock. So I'm like, okay. And then Bluegrass's Greatest Hits. And there's like, I mean, it's one cassette. There's like 45 songs on it. <laughs> and they all sound the same. <laughs> and I don't even know if I listened to the first one, but, you know, it's that thing, you know. <laughs> the Jacksons and Bluegrass's Greatest Hits. <laughs> that's 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 a spectrum right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, same thing. It's like, what? It finally, she's finally like, no more. But it's been going on for like 10 years. So, uh, my wife will, it's, she's very specific about the stuff she likes. And so, like, it's not like if you just give her something, she won't be happy about it. But, like, it's, she's kind of particular. So, if she, you know, it's like, she wants a, you know, she wants a watch. She wants to pick it out. She, you know, it's like that, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And so like she has a style and so like I know her well enough that I'm I know what she likes so I can go pick stuff out. But um other people will be like, Oh, you know, what does Meg want? And I'll be like, I don't know. Like get her you know. So one year I cracked a joke, I was like I was like, I don't know, she likes garden gnomes. And then like <laughs> So you come over to our house, man, we got gnomes. <laughs> like, <laughs> And she's probably going, them, why does everybody get me gnomes? 
Well, at, at first she was like, oh, they're so cute because you have different ones and different poses and stuff. But then when anybody can't figure out what to get her for Christmas or for her birthday or something, she gets to get her a gnome. Get another gnome. <laughs> so, like, and it's, so wow. yeah, so it's it's kind of funny because she we got gnomes. And she's, right. like, she's like, dude, enough with the gnomes. It's been like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of the same deal with Becky, too. She shouldn't be hard to buy for, but she is because, you know, same deal. She's She's got her, her style, and I don't know, man. It, it's hard to surprise her with something because she never goes, ooh, I like that, you know? Mm. You ask her what she wants for Christmas, and it's always, I want some scaffolding. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> scaffolding? <laughs> I need some scaffolding or, or a cherry picker, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think we're getting that either one. So, so I never like my my mom would always be so hard to buy for because you know, there's only so many little macaroni boxes you can make and so many little trinketies <laughs> at the dollar store you can get. So you know, around teenage years, like, what do you want for Christmas, mom? She's like, I just want good kids. And finally, I was like, well, that ain't happening. <laughs> so. so <laughs> I just want good kids, not you guys. Some other good yeah. kids. Oh, I just want my kids to be good. I'm like, oh, well, that ain't happening. So you might as well yeah. choose a yep. macaroni <laughs> choose art. A it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, and now, like with my kids, we're, like <laughs> my my oldest one, she likes to read books, and she's very outgoing and personable. But like, it's like when she plays, imagine like imagination games she yeah. likes to be the character so she's oh, yeah. always been the one that dresses up and mm -hmm. plays the role um my younger one she will sit in her room for hours with a dollhouse or a barn and she will play with her horses and her dolls and be play the doll game she calls it yeah older one will play the doll game with the younger one if the younger one wants to play mm -hmm. but Otherwise, if just left to her own devices, she doesn't do that. But now she's asking for like a Malibu Dream House or Barbie Dream House, and it's like two hundred forty nine dollars and half right. the size of her bedroom. And we're right. both like, um, "Sorry to have to tell you this, but no, <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we don't want you to be disappointed. But you don't even play with Barbies unless Autumn plays with Barbies, and she's already got a dollhouse, and she doesn't want." Any more crap in her room? So. All right. <laughs> she, like, <laughs> yeah. Our granddaughter's like, the same way. She 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 plays the character. So, her and my wife play Powerpuff Girls all the time. So every time she comes over, you know she's got to be Buttercup, and my wife has to be Bubbles, and I'm always <laughs> Mojo Jojo, and you know, and we're and we act out the same thing every time, and but. She doesn't really play things like like you're talking about, where these are the characters. No, she's the character. Mm -hmm. So and that's that's kind of where we are too with with her. So it's it's strange how just kids are different like that. Just watching them right next to each other. Yeah, you're just like same, you know, same house, same same yeah. toys, same, you know, yeah. just but one just. It's a personality thing, you know. It's. It's a lot of fun though, and that's why, like, when we're talking about Christmas toys and stuff, you know, like, keep an eye on. Like, I, I have a hard time because my kids' birthdays are mid December oh, and man. the, the the end of November. <laughs> so, so like Thanksgiving and Christmas, pretty much just, and their birthdays are right inside of that. So it's wow. just like, like we. My wife and I have to have committee meetings, and actually, it's like it's not it's not like like hey look, and we're like. Begging you, please, no large toys, because <laughs> you got nowhere to put it. <laughs> my my father in law bought them the frozen pop up palace. Oh yeah, a little pop up tent, right? Mm -hmm. That's got like corridors to other rooms. It takes up, God, a good half size, like a good size living room. It fills up. Oh yeah, and um. But we brought it home and we set it up and we couldn't ha we didn't have enough flat surface to set up the whole thing without it sitting on a couch or something. <laughs> and so we like folded it up and sent it back. We're like, you can play with this at Mimi's house. <laughs> we're not... 
Yeah, we kind of did the same thing. We got Jade a teepee, and it's a, I mean, you can get inside this thing. I mean, it takes, it's bigger than, than this closet that I'm in right here. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it stays here because they have no room for it at their place, you know? <laughs> and we kind of did that thing where, you know, we told our daughter and son-in-law, look, don't buy us anything. We won't buy you anything. We'll just buy presents for Jade, which we only had Jade at the time. Poor Jade. She had like 75 presents. The kid was actually <laughs> tired of opening presents. She actually had to take a take a break. So... <laughs> Uh, yep. I think I can open presents all day long. Oh, it's, yeah. It's just, it's the fun part of it. Like, I don't ever really care about what's in them. It's just more of like the, yay! So I always try to be real secretive and wrap things. And, sure. You know. So what's something that you currently want for Christmas? Oh, man. You know, that's one of those things. Like, the last couple of years, the last four or five years, it's it's been such that if you've gotten to a point where you just got everything that you that you're just happy like pretty much um like i'm i'm always like well <laughs> one two three there's one hanging in there four there's five guitars in here there's one in there we got two ukuleles i got a guitar amp down there i got a another one of so Yes, I'm in the market for a guitar if the price is right. <laughs> I would always like a new guitar. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I've been looking. I promised myself a long time ago. In fact, whenever whenever I quit smoking, which was over 10 years ago, like if I quit smoking and I'm successful for a year, I'm going to buy myself a nice Martin acoustic mm-hmm. guitar. And if you say, well, what about a Taylor or a Takamini? Or, it's like I've played on them all. That Martin tone is just yeah. kind of, you know, it's like. Yeah. It's like well, if I'm that's not, what if they're I, all, tr- if, they're all trying to copy the Martin sound. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, yeah, but they're also a lot less expensive too. So right. I, mean, it's like I could probably True. save some money by buying, buying something else. And that's fair and that's fine. But it gets to a certain point where it's like, if you're talking to the difference between like a three and a $500 guitar, like. Right. But if you're talking the difference between like a you know, $1,200 guitar and a $1,400 guitar, you might as well go to the 14 and get what you want. You right. <laughs> like, right. Get the, get the, you know, if you're talking $200 either way, when you're already up into those numbers, you might as well get the thing you want. But um, I just never, I never got around to, when I was in the band, I never played acoustic, so I didn't have to. And I couldn't justify buying equipment when I needed other equipment for the band while I was in the band, I couldn't justify spending money on equipment that I wasn't planning on using in the band. Right. 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 And then after the band, I just kind of fell off. I didn't play very much, certainly not enough to, to justify that expense. So I just kind of like, but then with COVID, like I, I, I play a lot now, like, yeah. And, and I'm playing acoustic, I'm playing electric. I'm, you know, learning techniques that it, so now I'm like, okay, I can justify the expense and, you know, like all the other, except for I'm unemployed. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so unless Santa, unless Santa is feeling generous, then, uh, it's probably going to just be, you know, <laughs> how about yourself? What, I'm, what are your, what? I'm actually eyeballing a little guitar amp that I want, which I don't know if you've seen it or not. It's, it's made by positive grid. And it's called the Spark. Okay. You need you need to check this thing out, man. It's pretty incredible. It's 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 a very small, uh, very small amp, but you run it with your your cell phone, <clears throat> and you've got access to tens of thousands of different guitar sounds because they're okay. all in this cloud, and the sounds are pretty freaking amazing. And so you every, eliminate all the need for pedals and right. I mean, you can still use pedals and stuff if you want with it, but I'm telling you, get on YouTube and look up Positive Grid Spark. Okay. And I haven't seen anybody say that they weren't just blown away by it yet, and it's only like 250 bucks. Oh wow! It's so it's a, it's a little practice. It's only like 40 watts, but just the the abilities to have every great guitar sound you ever wanted in this little practice amp and it be as small as 
you know, close to the, you know, if you took a couple of lunch boxes and put them together, that's about the size of it. It's very small. See, and, and that's uh, what, that was the other thing, because, you know, I've got my, <clears throat> the amp that I played out with, that's just, a, it's just a single 12, but it's just a little combo amp, a little cus- custom 36. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great little amp, except for, I, for, for, the, for what I do, I usually sit around and I play unplugged. You know, yeah. so I'm playing. I'm playing an electric guitar without without playing anything in it at all. Right. Um, but to have like all of the cables and pedals and everything, and have to have, to have the amp dialed in and warmed yep. up and all, I'm like, so yep. then I have this just little Marshall practice amp. Right. And you know what? It sounds just as good. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, okay, well, if I can, if I can consolidate and, like you say, just get some kind of little, you know. Call it a boutique style, just right. something that if I if I need to play out, I can yep. mic it and it sounds yep. good, yep. or it has a line out or something. But that I can just play while I want to play and then turn it off and it's not in the way, which is pretty much what this little Marshall practice amp is too. But right. it doesn't sound it doesn't sound great on the overdrive. So. <laughs> right. Well, I can't even tell you everything else this amp does. It's like the ultimate practice amp. Because it's got all these filters features built into it, where it'll even it'll even make you a ba- a backing track, where you can oh, just wow. strum out the chords that you want it to be, and it will go and configure a bass line and a drum pattern to go along with it, and loop it so you can use it to to just do practice stuff with. It's absolutely freaking amazing what this thing will do. I, as soon as we hang up, I'm gonna get on there and look at that. <laughs> that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, I've got a little I've got a little Brian May. Vox amp, you know, when they when they started bringing out the I've, so I've got a little the little bitty Brian May amp that you know it's got his signature and stuff on it, and I mean it's all right, but I like having all the options, you know, because mm-hmm. you know if I want to do some chicken picking stuff, I want it to sound like a, a Fender Tweed or something, or you know. Well, so it I, seems like for me, for me, my 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 style is just very stripped mm-hmm. down. Like, yeah, I don't really. Oh. This is full range speakers too, so you can use it to play music through. It's just like a home stereo. Oh wow! It's I mean it's that's it's awesome. On, it's Bluetooth. So that's what I was gonna say is like because my my stuff's very stripped down, so I've never really like like I had pedals as I needed them. Like I use a wah, so I have a wah. Right, sure. I was never one of those guitar players. It's just like I'm gonna buy an effect just to see what it does and see if I can make it work for me. It's like <laughs> nope. Like if I if I needed it, then I got it and I set right. it up into my rig. Yeah. But even then, like I play primarily i'll always have like primarily acoustic electric with kind of like distortion overdrive wah and flange just kind of like (laughs) very very stripped kind of straightforward so again if that does all of that stuff to where it's like oh you don't have to push a button and you don't have to worry about carrying around all this extra weight then that's that sounds pretty awesome yeah oh yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's ideal for me because I can put it on this filing cabinet in here in this closet <laughs> and just jam <laughs> away. <laughs> Welcome to the guitar Christmas episode of You Dude. Know What's Awesome. <laughs> Guitars are awesome. Yeah, they we are. Said, we said it before. <laughs> well, cool. Well, let's put a fork in this one so I can go check out this amp. All and right. We'll be back next week to talk about something awesome Christmas related one more time. And then again, because <laughs> I think we've got four weeks before Christmas. Something sure. like that. We're, yeah. We're good to go. All right, man. We'll take care and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah.